Uh, Minister, a Canadian traveler, uh, traveler recently left this public comment on TripAdvisor, and I quote, just got back from a trip to Nevada, flying out of Buffalo, and I'm from Ontario. The airport is a dream, no lineups, quick through TSA checkpoints. The airport is super clean. He also added, it was a quick drive over to the airport, no COVID testing required. Crossing across the U.S. border is easy. They only ask if you're vaccinated and do not ask to see your test. I have crossed three times in the past two months. Same thing every time. Coming back across the border at the Rainbow Bridge, there are about 10 cars in front of us, and it took forever to get to a booth. So anyone thinking of ditching Pearson Airport and traveling down to Buffalo, do it. It's worth it. Minister, Niagara Falls is the number one tourism leisure destination in all of Canada. Yet every taxpayer dollar that Destination Canada spends in international markets, including our prime market, the United States, for our border communities, is being wasted by headlines that continually hit the press talking about Pearson Airport being the worst airport in the world. My colleague has just mentioned this. 60 countries around the world have abandoned all air travel pandemic restrictions, including most of our European allies. So why does this government continue to cling to these restrictions which only do a disservice and disincentivize travel to this country? Good question. Mr. Chair, um, it, it helps no one to undermine confidence in our aviation sector and in our institution. I acknowledge the fact that in Canadian airports and airlines, we've witnessed and continue to witness some congestion similar to what we're seeing around the world, including in the United States. I also acknowledge that we have currently the only public health measures at our borders is requiring proof of vaccination, by the way, just like the US and many countries around the world. Um, and work is being done on a daily basis to address these congestion issues, and the evidence pr proves that things are getting better. More work is needed, but things are getting better. I want to ask my honorable colleague if he really, really cares about the fluidity of our borders. Why did he and his colleagues support these blockades who blocked our borders, who blocked our borders for weeks, prevented Canadians and Minister. others from... Minister, the, the question period is, 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 is to me now. And if you had done your job, Minister, and spoken to stakeholders, including the federally bridge that you regulate in Fort Erie, the Fort Erie Peace Bridge Authority, you appoint members of that commission. They can tell you about the border delays, about traffic being down 50 percent, Minister, yet wait times are up over more, almost over two hours, and yet you've done nothing. Minister, you have a hard time responding to correspondence from them, and they're your commission that you regulate. So why are you continuing to put incent disincentives to travel to this country? 40,000 people in my community work in the tourism sector, and they're being impacted. And this, we've lost two tourism years because of COVID. This year, if we lose it, it's self-inflicted, and there's nobody to blame but this Liberal government. When are you going to take actions? Who told you, Minister, that Arrive Can is not having any impact on wait times? Mr. Chair, uh, setting aside the bluster there, um, we continue to do everything we can to protect the health and safety of Canadians and facilitating smooth um, um, border crossing for all travelers. And we have had all hands on deck, whether it is at airports or land borders. My colleagues and I have been working with border communities to ensure that uh, they have the tools they need to facilitate safe and efficient border crossing. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, the con the public health measures that we have... Who have you spoken to, Minister? Similar, have similar, you spoken to the stakeholders? Have you spoken similar, to the bridge commissions? Have you spoken uh, to the tourism stakeholders? My understanding is the Liberal uh, caucus was meeting recently in Niagara Falls, the Ontario caucus. Did they meet with any stakeholders to hear from them directly about the impact that it's having on my community? Yes or no? Uh, Mr. Chair, I know my colleague Vance Badaway is here, a member of the committee, who's been a proud and a vocal advocate on behalf of the Niagara region, who has been a champion for the Great Lakes, who's been a champion for the communities, who have been working... Then why aren't you listening to him? ...collaboratively with uh, our ministers who've been working collaboratively yeah. with stakeholders. I have met with stakeholders. I've met with uh, uh, experts in tourism, and we will continue to do... Ten more seconds, please, can. Minister. To ensure Why does it take you months to respond to your own government agency that reports to you? 
a safe and efficient travel. It's unfortunate that the Conservatives never taken COVID seriously. It's unfortunate that the Conservatives supported these illegal blockades that blocked our borders and had a massive impact on border communities, have not apologized for it to this day. But we, on the other hand, Mr. Chair, are focused... Minister, they're thank going to hold a parade much, in Buffalo for thank you. you very much, Their Mr. Chamber Baldinelli. of Commerce is going to hold a parade for you.